I think it's about time we had ourselves an intervention and put to bed some of the worst offences that have ever graced the wall. In this episode, I'll be uncovering the street art trends that have to go. Ain't nobody gonna be safe in this one. My name's Doug, you are watching Fifth Wall TV. To make sure you don't miss a beat on what's going on in the world of street art, why don't you link with us right now on Instagram at Fifth Wall TV. And if you're watching this just now on YouTube, give that wee subscribe button a tickle to make sure you never miss a video. And if you enjoy this, make sure you share it. Share it loud and share it proud so I can show the people on my Facebook that have babies and houses that I haven't completely made horrible life decisions. Before we get stuck into this, I just want to outline a couple of things. Uh, this video is just an opinion piece meant to be taken with a sizable pinch of salt. Um, if your work falls into one of these categories or happens to be featured in this video, it's not a personal dig at you or your art, it's just a comment on themes and trends. Um, unless, of course, your name is Alan Monopoly, in which case your work is trash, you should stop. With that in mind, I've put together my list, I've asked you for your suggestions, and I'm going to be reading them out later, so let's get stuck into this. Nothing says classy quite like rushing onto the streets armed with a spray paint and a stencil to pay tribute to someone you've never even met before their bodies even turn cold. Now, this is a tricky one because I'm not saying that no celebrity tribute murals work. I'm just saying that there's definitely a split. Some do and some really don't. And the difference in these for me is pretty much twofold. What seems to be a common theme in the ones that irk me is that half the piece is dedicated to your Instagram handle. Like you can't avoid this thing. It's like you're more concerned about bumping up your social media following than you are of actually paying homage and respect to the deceased. The second is placement. Like, as done to death as it is, I still get why people want to paint Amy Winehouse in Camden. She embodied the spirit. She had such a connection to that area. That makes sense. But when you're doing, like, Kurt Cobain in Tel Aviv, it's like, well, hang on, am I missing something here? I believe the reason this bugs quite a lot of people is... If we take art as a concept that's intended to evoke emotion or response, this is like the cheapest way of tapping into that. Because it's like saying, here's a person you know that is familiar, they're dead now, that's sad. By the way, you can follow me on Instagram when you post this. Namaste everybody, look at me, I'm a beautiful angel. You're not. You're standing in a puddle of piss in a tunnel that's mainly used to shoot heroin. Angel wings are like Native American headdresses at a festival. Like, just, just stop. Drawing penises on a wall will never not be funny. It should be encouraged at all times. I'm gonna become a street artist, yo. I mean, most people see a wall and they just see a wall. I look at a wall and I see like a goat in a backpack. I got here. I can't believe we're having to have this conversation in 2018. I can't believe we still have to explain to guys why it's not cool to paint prepubescent male fantasies of women on walls in the public domain. Like, we are talking about half the world's population here. We're talking about your mothers, your sisters, your teachers, your doctors, your lawyers, the people that bail you out of jail, that raise you, that shape you, and you cannot come up with a single image deeper than a walking pair of tits? Come on, man, if that's all you've got, you might as well just go paint adverts. This one's super simple for me. I'm not really bothered if it was hand painted, if it was done by a machine or a team of highly trained squirrels. Like at the very foundation and the core, you're trying to sell products. And there is ways that advertising and street art can engage successfully with each other. And I've talked about that before, but this culture of kind of like billboard flyer painting, I think it's so detrimental and such a slap in the face to every single predecessor that has helped build this into such a rich and engaging art scene and if I'm honest I think this is fundamentally what might actually kill off muralism. Africa is a continent comprised of 54 different countries, some of which have the fastest growing economies in the world, and some of which have the most crippling examples of corruption and enslavement in the world. But reducing the experience of 1.2 billion people down to a one-dimensional image of a child covered in flies asking for help is the stuff of colonial white savior wet dreams. It's not thought provoking, it's not helping anyone, and at its absolute best, it's lazy. Ugh. 
I feel, I feel lighter, I feel nimble, I feel like I've got something off my chest there. That was pure therapy. Thank you for listening to me on that one. I'm sure you're all going to be very kind in the comment section. But before we get to any of that part, I asked you guys what your suggestions were. And this is obviously a subject that's been kind of nipping at the bud for so many of you. And you guys went in. When a genius idea pops into my head, I can't take credit for it. Because it didn't come from me came from my brain. I'm doing my best here to read out as many as I possibly can. I apologize in advance if I get the pronunciation or the name wrong, um, but let's go in. Displaced Replace, Hello the Mushroom, and James Shooter have all had it with pretty ladies. Feral Things and Roland Henry both hinted towards the notion of street art precincts and overly curated walls, and I think this is something that's really important and possibly a video in its own. Milo Koresh thinks the hegemonic representation of women by men should burn in heaven. Both Snick and David Withers think it's about time we just gave up on stencils altogether. Snick, I look forward to seeing your 2019 solo show of stencilist freehand figuratives. Sure to be a, a hit. At Hello the Mushroom also wants to put an end to the appropriation of David Bowie's Aladdin saying lightning bolt. At Andy Thorne 777 thinks that we should be seeing less fifth wall stickers. Not sure you understand the game, mate. Both Josh Jevons and Ben Murphy want to put signing your work with an Instagram handle in the bin. I think this is an interesting one, especially when your name is the same as your Instagram handle. It's like people will figure this out. Like you don't have to just be a damn grown up. I'm going to start introducing myself as hi, I'm at Doug Gillen. That was a terrible joke. Absolutely 10 out of 10 participation from you guys. You all went in. I really enjoyed reading through that. There was, however, one for me that really stood out ahead of the pack, and it was sent in via Instagram by at Moscow London, who's just about had enough of paid for political propaganda. The specific piece of propaganda he's referring to was a worldwide campaign that saw artists and activists going out creating pro-Russia interventions that was entirely funded by the Russian government. Articles covering the interventions were then ran on networks like RT, Sputnik and In The Now, showing apparent worldwide support for the Russian regime. The dead celebrities and the angel wings, I can let slide, but if ever there was a trend within street art that needed to be left behind, it's paid for political propaganda that shows support for a regime that repeatedly obliterates civilians and decimates fundamental human rights of its own people. So there you go, we made it through this incarnation of street art trends that need to be left behind. If uh, I don't get entirely obliterated in the comments in this one, then maybe we can do this again in the future. Uh, if your work was featured here and you are really upset, then just be better. Till next time, my name's Doug. This is Fifth Wall TV. Yeah.